Honorable Congressman Jody Heiss. Well, thank you so much, Gordon, and uh, thank you. Uh, what, a, what a great crowd. Thank you all for being here. And the energy is so critically important. Uh, but listen, with, with remarks, we're going to have some time for some Q&A. I always like to hear from you and some questions that you have, and I'll do the best I can to answer as much as I can. But uh, let me begin tonight just by saying in as heartfelt ways that I can, a huge thank you. This is probably the last time that I'll speak here uh, at Clark County Republicans as your congressman. And I want to thank you all for an incredible support group that you have been for the last eight years and some of you for almost 10 years. We ran almost two years before the election. Uh, and many of you, I just look around here, have been engaged for a long time. And I just want to say thank you so much. It's been the honor of my life to, be, to represent you in D.C. Uh, it's been the headache of my life as well. <laughs> but it's been the, the, the honor of my life to be able to, to be in D.C. And I just um, really want to say thank you for your incredible, incredible support. And some of you have heard me speak so many times over the years. And I've said it thousands of times. I say it now with more conviction than I've ever said it before. But we are absolutely in the fight of our life for this country. Right morally, spiritually, economically, militarily. I mean, you can go down the line in every capacity. We are in the fight of our life. And y'all, this is not the time for us to back down. This is not the time to cower. This is not the time to get tired. This is the time to dig deep. There is so much at stake. I mean, the stakes are so incredibly high. And this, this applies whether we're talking local, state or federal across the board the stakes are so high and this is a time we've got to engage and be plugged in like never before and so uh, i want to thank you that you are and i want to urge you to talk with those who are not and lay lay it out on the table with the issues that we're dealing with and encourage them to get involved and with that let me just kind of give you a, a little fraction, if I can, of the lay of the land in D.C. right now. Uh, it's horrible, to, to just to kind of put it politely. These, these are just unprecedented times. I mean, you look around, this week we had another pro-life individual whose house was seized and, and he is arrested for exercising the First Amendment. Like what if we are watching our federal government weaponized against people just like you and me, people who believe in conservative principles, believe in God, believe in our Constitution, believe in family, believe in some of the basic things that we have always cherished as Americans. Amen. We are we are entering a time where those beliefs are no longer being tolerated by a radical left wing hate filled Democratic Party, who at this point is using everything within their power <laughs> to go after people who disagree with their agenda. And look, we've always been a country that we, we have different beliefs and different political parties, and, and we've celebrated that. But that celebration has come uh, rapidly coming to an end as the, the Democratic Party in D.C. right now, I'll, I'll put it that way, the, the National Democratic Party is out to destroy anyone who does not go along with them. And it's just it's pretty unprecedented, and we've seen it over and over and over. I'm sure I could give you uh, many examples, and you could give me many examples, but it's kind of frightening, particularly when you watch the, the federal government, the power of the federal government in these agencies, the ones that are being weaponized to come up against American citizens. So we've got that going on. We still have wide open borders. Fentanyl is now the number one cause of death in America, and it is flooding across our southern border, and zero being done to stop it. We, we, we still can't get our administration to go, to even look at the southern border, uh, to witness it. And I can tell you firsthand, 
I've been to all nine sectors of our southern border. I have seen it across the board from the most eastern part of Texas all the way to California. I have seen it firsthand. I've had dinners with landowners. I've been out there in the middle of the night with our border patrol agents. I've watched what is happening and it is inexcusable. Mm -hmm. The human trafficking, the drug trafficking, uh, the, the criminals that are coming across our borders. Uh, and and we're, we're gonna have two million this year alone, it looks like, and that is just the people we know. We have no idea how many are coming across uh, the, the more remote portions of our, our border and we simply do not have the manpower to determine who those individuals are. Uh, it's inexcusable and you have to ask yourself, why? Why is this happening? You look at what's happening in our, in our military right now. And I, I agree with Gordon and thank our, our veterans that are uh, spread out here. Thank you so much for your service. That has been one of the primary areas that we have tried to help since I've been a, a member of Congress. We have put our, our military and our veterans at, as a top priority and far and away, they've been the number one group of people that we've been able to serve. But you look at what's happening in our military right now. The vax men mandate alone, we, we literally, it, it's like watching a patriot purge, if you will, that's taking place in our military. And I cannot tell you the number of individuals that have contacted our office and we, that we've been trying to help our military personnel who are being kicked out. And it's just uh, absolute insanity that's, that we're watching there. We're watching energy prices. Someone told me today, gas prices went up 20 cents today alone. I don't know if it's happened at the uh, place where you buy gasoline, but just today we've seen a huge spike. Just a little over two years ago, we were energy independent. Gas was less than $2 a gallon. And now we're no longer energy independent, we are dependent. Mm -hmm. And on many occasions, that dependency is on our enemies. What, what, what kind of brilliant idea is that? You know, I mean, it does, the, the, some of these things don't take rocket science to figure out this is a bad idea, but we continue making bad ideas after another. We now are $31 trillion in debt and climbing. Um, and it's just an absolute addiction to spending money that we don't have. And that's happening in Washington. Um, we, we are watching crime skyrocket, inflation skyrocket in ways that Many of us have not seen in decades and decades and decades, and now it's happening all over again. And we could go on and on. Uh, you know, our religious liberties are under attack. Um, life is under attack. I mean, we, we, we could just go on and on, and I'll open up for some Q&A here in just a few moments. But let me just kind of share with you, in the next couple of months, what I expect to be happening in Washington and then what is going to happen after the election. Just kind of give you a 30,000 foot view as best as I can. The number one thing that uh, we're probably looking at between now and the election is the CR, the continuing resolution, funding the, the government. Uh, it's, it's very frustrating and I, I don't really know how because our leadership to be honest with you is part of the problem in all of this. Uh, we don't have the, the wherewithal to fight uh, what's happening, but right now uh, the Democrats with some help from Republicans, uh, but the Democrats are giving us a CR that is going to last through the middle of December. Uh, we were pushing for it to go to at least the middle of January so that a new Congress could thereby come in in January and deal with the budgetary issues, um, but the Democrats won in getting a uh, continuing resolution that will go through the middle of December. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna be just days away from Christmas and they will be pressuring us. Either you're gonna go home for Christmas and pass this new CR, or you're gonna miss Christmas and we're gonna be here, we're gonna shut down the government, we're going to, and all these tactics start coming into play and what ends up, there will be a horrible, horrible CR 
that could go for a few months or they may even try to push it out for an entire year, pushing radical left-wing agenda, a massive war debt, uh, and a new Congress having nothing to say about it uh, for whatever time frame. I don't know what the time frame is going to be, but that's what's about to happen. We're going to be held hostage right before Christmas, and there will be many people who will cave because they want to get home to be with their families at Christmas, and um, we're probably going to be forced with a horrible uh, budgetary item that will take us into a certain amount of next year. So many of us are fighting like crazy to uh, <laughs> make that CR the next one as short as possible and to allow a new Congress to come in and have the authority that the American people have granted them to do the job that they've been entrusted to do. So that's an oncoming battle that is about to take place as we wrap down this year. That's probably going to be the single biggest battle that we face. Uh, I do anticipate in this upcoming election that we're going to see a red wave across this country. Uh, I can't go anywhere without people literally fearful of the direction our country is going. A poll that I saw this past week, 69% of Americans say our country is headed in the wrong direction. Uh, that's, you know, rounded off 70%. So that means Democrats as well as Republicans recognize that we're going in the wrong direction in this country. I firmly believe that's going to be enormously stated in this upcoming election. I believe we're gonna see a, a red wave that is significant. I believe we're gonna take back control of the House of Representatives. I believe we're gonna take back the Senate. That certainly is gonna be much closer, but I believe we're gonna be able to pull that off. Uh, and. At least if we get, if, even if we don't get the Senate, but we do get the House, that's a huge putting on of the brakes of this radical agenda that's being forced down our throats right now. And so that's a good thing. Um, and of course, President Biden um, is, uh, he doesn't even know where he is half the time. I mean, it's just absolutely pathetic that we are watching this lack of leadership in our country at this critical time. Uh, we have North Korea shooting <coughs> bombs every week. We've got what's happening in uh, Ukraine. We've got China flexing their muscle, Iran flexing their muscle. And here we are um, just in utter lack of leadership. But I believe we're going to see some significant changes come November. And that is, at least in the House, going to be a huge stopping of a lot of what has been taking place and a reversal of a lot of it. And although the reversal is going to be, uh, I, I say that, uh, we're not really going to be able to, it depends on what happens in the Senate, obviously. Uh, we can only do so much in the House, but the Senate has to pass it. And then, of course, the President has to, to sign it, which is not going to be very easy to do. Uh, but there will be some things that I think we'll probably even be able to get president sign, to sign because there's going to be just so much pressure uh, dealing with things like inflation and the cost of gas and health care and on and on and on and on. There's going to be certain things that he's almost going to be backed in the corner that I believe he's going to have to sign and come along with. So, but then, you know, two years from now is going to be another huge battle. So immediately after this election, it's going to kick into high gear uh, within months after this election. We're going to see it unfolding for the battle for the next two two years from now. So just be prepared for that. I know everybody gets tired and all that sort of stuff, but y'all, it's critical mass. This is, a, this is a time all hands on deck. The stakes are so high, we're gonna have to, to uh, give it all we've got. So with that, uh, I, know, I don't know exactly where we are on time. Okay. We gotta get you though. Yeah, I've gotta get to Walton County, but uh, Gordon says we have time for a few, few questions. Who's, who's, doing, who's calling on people for me? All right. Uh, Question, Al, can the new Congress rein in the Justice Department by freezing its funding? Yes, they can. Uh, the question is twofold. Will they have the political will to do so? Uh, I know a lot of the people I hang out with absolutely are doing that. We've already got several pieces of legislation to do that. There again, though, understand it's got to go from the House to the Senate to the President, and there's got to be uh, sign, off, sign off all the way across. That's gonna make it relatively difficult. 
Let me give you a little bit of the climate. Just two weeks ago, I had a bill on the House floor, um, which is kind of hard right now, to be honest with you, even as a Republican, as a conservative, Freedom Caucus, Christian Republican, to get something on the floor for a vote. But I have, I've had about three of them in the last couple of weeks. But one of them in particular um, put back into place that the president has the authority to fire federal workers who don't implement his policies or her policies, whomever the president may be. And understand this, there's every, every federal worker, there, there's categories, okay? There's, you're, you're in this category, this category, this category. But there is about 3% of the federal workforce, one to 3%, whose job it is is just policy implementation. So this was not a bill that covered all the federal government, just one to 3% whose specific job it is, is to implement the policies of the duly elected president, regardless of who that president is, and regardless of your uh, political affiliation, your job as a federal worker is to implement the policies of the president. Well, we saw what happened under Trump, um, and so I was just trying to say, look, whoever it is, Democrat or Republican, the president needs to be able to implement their policies. The country voted them in. And if, if those, that segment of federal workers don't do so, uh, they, they can be fired by the president. Totally went down. Because, look, the Democrats know they have that mm -hmm. in, in the federal workforce. They have people who are not going to implement Republican policies, period. And so here we have outright I mean, the, you should have been there to hear the debate on the floor. I mean, it was just unbelievable. But here we literally have a party that is saying, we are not gonna allow your policies to be implemented. I mean, that was basically the discussion. So it's an uphill battle, whether we're dealing with the DOJ or whatever, it's gonna be an uphill battle. But we start the process now, we're gonna be battling, and I, I think two years from now is when the tide turns.